Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button, join the growing family, turn notifications on so you never miss an upload or a live stream and make sure you give me a thumbs up because it really does help me out. So today as you read in the title, hopefully you read the title or the thumbnail, but if you didn't, today we're talking about police and mental health. Now I thought I'd do a video explaining the ins and the outs, the good, the bad. Now as I'm sure you guys are aware, I applied to join the police, so obviously I think there's a job to be done. The first time I had experience with police was when I lived in Preston. If you don't know where Preston is, it's in Lancashire, which is in the north of the UK, northwest to be exact. I was living up there studying at university, my first university. I've been to two universities, three universities. So yeah, my first experience with police. I was on a bridge about to jump and I wasn't on medication. I called the crisis team, the crisis team called the police. Then I hallucinated a man following me, so I ran all the way up to the top of the park, which I ran up a hill that was like that. <laughs> when I got to the top, I called the police and said someone's following me. And when they arrived, they couldn't find anybody. They thought, do you suffer from any mental health condition? I said, yes, bipolar. And they placed me on a section 136. Now. For a first interaction I was absolutely terrified because the word section is, it has an impact. So that's the first real interaction I had with police and my mental health. And the police were perfectly fine with me, they were just trying to reassure me that everything was going to be okay. In Lancashire the worst experience I had was with this one police officer who thought I was doing everything for attention. She saw me. She accused me of attention seeking. Now, I was not attention seeking, I did not want police involved. It was when I ran away from home. From home I mean where I was living because I didn't want to keep disturbing the people I live with with police coming around. So I left because I knew the crisis team had phoned the police. And when they phoned me and asked where I was, I was like, I don't know the street name because I was new to the area. I don't, even now I don't know the name of that road. <laughs> but I said I'm near Iceland because that's where I was. The police, police van comes round and she grabs my wrist tightly, puts me in the back of a van and says stop attention seeking. And they drove me home. There was no consideration about my mental health or why they had been called. It was just your attention seeking fuck off, basically. And that sucks that that was the reaction that I, they had. Because I wasn't attention seeking, I was struggling. And the thing is my bipolar was kind of untreated. So the antidepressant I was on was causing psychosis and mania which needed treating really but this police officer no you're attention seeking okay I did place a complaint against her and she was disciplined the time she saw me she would stop me ask why I was going and if I said something she didn't like she shoved me in the back of the police van and drive me home. She was the worst police officer I've ever had the displeasure of meeting. The reason I want to join the police is so I can do a better job than she did that night. Because it's never okay to accuse someone with mental illness as attention seeking. You may think they're attention seeking but deep down they're struggling. Even if they are looking for attention there's obviously a cause to that. So shouldn't you get to the root of that cause? rather than just calling them an attention seeker. The reason I want to join the police is because I know I can do better. Then we had the I got arrested situation 
which we're not going to talk about because I will say this on the matter though how can you arrest someone who called the, the crisis team who sent police because of risk to sell so, saw someone self-harming when they arrived in my flat arrest them for wasting police time refuse them bail because of risk to self put them in a self-harm suit in a self-harm cell and then a day later after you've refused them bail have a mental health act assessment done where they get sectioned how is that possible that's a huge fuck up on their part but then we i moved to london and i was under the crisis team from the minute i moved to london because i the brief time I was in Telford, which is where I'm from, because of risk to self, and me not because I wasn't a permanent resident in Telford, I couldn't be under the mental health team because the waiting list was to too long. I would have moved on by then, so like I was kept under the crisis team, and that helped. They came to me and it was genuinely a decent experience with the crisis team. If you want me to make a video on that, let me know in the comments down below. Back onto the subject of police. I've been under... I've had police involved in my mental health for the last eight years of my life. And I've even had police involved while I've lived here because I left hospital, I left A&E and they was waiting for a bed so they called the police and the police came, I overdosed again and they took me back to A&E and they stayed there to try and calm me down in handcuffs. Got a love a kinky officer. So I've experienced the good and the bad. With police, it depends on the officer or officers that are dealing with you. Sometimes they are amazing and helpful and willing to support you. And sometimes they're just plain awful. There is no lucky dip with it, really. It's you get what you get. I know some people that have only had bad experiences with police. I've had good experiences with police and it's them good experiences that have made me want to become a police officer. The bad ones have obviously influenced me becoming, wanting to be a police officer too because I want to do better than them. Even though I've had my issues with police and believe me I've had issues it's okay to say that you've had a bad experience. Now I've been assaulted by officers, I've been shoved on the floor, I've been put in leg restraints and handcuffs. I've had a helmet put on my head to stop me headbanging. I've been through it all and I truly know that it's how they act in that moment that defines who they are as a person. So yeah, that's all I've got for this video. If you are new, make sure you hit the subscribe button to join the growing family, turn notifications on so you never miss an upload, and don't forget to give me a thumbs up, leave a comment of any video requests you have, or questions, and I'll answer them. And yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.